Good morning, Apple Teenies. This is a special edition of Bitten Apple TV. We're here with Tom from Lunacy. He's here to talk about his new models and all the things we've we haven't touched on before and good follow-up to our previous interview. Tom, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing very good. It's a nice day and weather's nice, cooperative. I hear Beautiful birds singing day. outside. It's very good. Not very too nice. hot, not too cold, not too muggy. It's actually really, yeah. I like the weather out here in Long Island. It's not yeah. bad out here compared yeah. to the mugginess of, new, of the city. So, tell us about your new models today. Well, we have, uh, for the first time, we have the three uh, uh, nomads together that were built. We have the original one. That's the first one. We have the uh, second one, which was built online. We showed everybody how to do that one. We had a minute at a clip. <laughs> my son and myself working late into the night with that one. And we also did the uh, the drag car late into the night. So those were the three that we actually uh, completed on the Nomads. I have a few that uh, were started in the conversion to convert them into a four-door station wagon, which uh, there's another project that I don't know if people would be interested in doing that, but uh, it's something that could be done with this kit. The good thing about the kit was there's a lot of options that you could do. There's also one way you can cut the roof off. You can turn it into a pickup truck, mm -hmm. which is a very nice option also. So uh, it's a very nice, very nice kit. It's an old kit, so there's a lot of cleanup on it, a lot of flash, a lot of cleanup right. that you have to do because the mold is over 30 years old, but it's still, still a very nice kit to work with. Oh, I like it. Classic. Right. Don't mess with the classics. Right, I like it. I like it very Formula much. Formula works, don't change it. No, no. It's a very good kit. So you were telling us earlier, um, you, was, you, was, you and your son get a lot of emails, people reaching out about different we, projects, different models, and you guys we get saw it. one that caught your eye. We had a tremendous amount of emails, and it's virtually impossible to respond to all of them. But we got one from uh, this gentleman in England and his son. They were working on the nomad that turned into a junker. Mm -hmm. And the son was very enthusiastic and the father was enthusiastic. They're working on it together. It was a father and son project. And what happened, the son was in a terrible motor vehicle accident mm -hmm. and he ended up in a hospital where he could hardly move. He was refined to the bed. And uh, he got very discouraged and he didn't want nothing to do with the model. He was very depressed. But the father, he, he liked the model and for some reason he kept working on it. And when he come to visit the son, he would always bring the model with him and show him the progress on it. And, you know, and the son was still not interested. He just, you know, and, but the father was persistent. So one day the father decided he was going to do the, do the, uh, the body work on it. So he lit the model on fire in the hospital room. The nurse came into the room and screaming and yelling, you can't do that in here. And they put the fire out. <laughs> So the father explained to the nurse what, what happened with the model and the son that they were interested in it. So the nurse calmed down and all that. But the father said that was the first time that he saw his son laugh since the accident. Amazing. And then he got back into building it and they completed the model and the son is home from the hospital and they're both doing well. That's amazing. That's, yeah. that's yeah. a heart well yeah, and, heartwarming story. Yeah, and they live in England, so they, it's from England. I mean, we've been getting calls from Australia, all, South Africa, all over the world. Unbelievable. So you guys are now international. Oh yeah. International oh yeah. Men's oh yeah. Of, oh, yeah. Of oh yeah. My, my, my son says over 51 countries that we're in with this. Uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. How many people can say that? I don't know. It is crazy. It's crazy to think about it, but yeah, it I is. Mean, I, being new to Bitten Apple, learning about the cons, you were literally the only guys I've ever seen to show so much love or even any real interest in model cars, oh, let alone yeah. customization or any other level you guys are on, especially what you, you've you done here. I know I said in, I'm sorry to cut you off, I know I've said in my first interview, but I still love the rust and all the detail. If you can see when he pans over the, the windshields, I'm just like awestruck at the detail on these. Because I've had this kind of damage to my real car, and it's not as amazing as it is in a model. Well, yes, if you know where the damage is, belongs on the car, you know where to put it, you know. Yeah, so that's, that is true. Well, well the, other, the other thing was, you know, the old cars, like from the 50s and all that, they were made out of a lot of recycled steel from after the war. Right. And they didn't refine all the impurities mm -hmm. out of it. After three or four years, your car started to rust. But five, six, seven years, the car was all rusted out. You know? Gives a character. It, it, it does, but uh, when your feet go through the floor where the, where the gas pedal is, you know it's time to get rid of it, you know? 
You know, it's funny you said that. My uncle told me <laughs> from his childhood, he had a car, you know, same, let's say similar age as these. <laughs> and there was a hole in the, on the floor in the passenger seat. And not to be too gross, but when they felt the need, they had to relieve themselves. All they did was pull up the carpet, <laughs> do their business, put the carpet back down, and they were still driving the entire time. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, Theo. I didn't mean to put you out there, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> you better delete that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Leave that there just <laughs> for him. <laughs> you got to do an edit on that one. But you know, nowadays, the cars, like, you sneeze, it's a dent. These cars back in the day, granted, yeah, they probably rusted a lot quicker than most of our cars now. They could take a hit. You knew you were safe in these tanks back in the day. Well, you know, the, the problem was with the cars, were, they were never really good. But the other problem was all the foreign cars were a lot worse. So, <laughs> so I guess we had the best of the worst, you know. If you look at them today, I mean, they're, they're very Jurassic. I mean, the brakes, you had all drum brakes all around mm -hmm. you. If you went through a big puddle, you couldn't stop the car. I mean, I, I had a 56 Chevy that I was going to work on Queens Boulevard, and I go to stop the car, and it doesn't stop, Ooh. right? I, I lost the master cylinder, re right rear master cylinder blew, and all the brake fluid leaked out. Oh, I hit the brakes on a red light. The car wouldn't stop, and there's eight lanes of traffic coming across. Yeah, Queens Boulevard is a dangerous road. I pull up the emergency brake, and about 600 feet later, the car <laughs> finally come to a stop. But that, that's one of the problems, a single master cylinder. Eesh. You know, and a lot of Jurassic stuff on these old cars. So uh, the modern cars... Even though yeah, you know, with their problems and other things, I mean, I don't like all the technology in them. Mm, it seems you know? a little overwhelming at times. It's it's it is overwhelming and and uh, you know with all this stuff in it, a car is supposed to be to take you from one place to the next, not to be there as an entertainment center, as far as I could tell. It seems like they're making a the car as like a second home. Yeah, it's like you an entertainment center. Cadillac, you're right. comfortable. It's luxury. It's like yeah, it is fine. I get to my destination comfortable, but what do I need all these gadgets? Oh, excuse me, what do I need all these gadgets and buttons for? Exactly, and, and you've spent a lot of money for that Cadillac. Uh -huh. And uh, after after six, seven years, what's it worth then? Uh -huh. you know? So all that money's out the window, and then you have to buy another new one. Yep. So you're in the same boat over and over. Yeah, at least with the models, you don't have that issue. You don't, don't have to worry about drum cylinders breaking. Yeah, that's it. The plastic wheel snaps off, you glue it back on, <laughs> yeah. and you're good to go, you know what I mean? I remember old skit from Saturday Night Live. They used to have a clay car. They showed get into an accident, and the guy comes out, and he just remolds the oh, car hey. right back to itself. There you go. That worked. That worked out Downside, good. Downside, you always had brown stains from the clay on your clothes. There you go. There you go. But it worked. <laughs> there any any uh, other new cars, projects you're working on? Well, I just want to uh, say this is another one, that another junk car that I did. And uh, this is a 57 Chevrolet. And what this is, this year was a terrible kit from day one. It's like an old mole from like 30, 30, 35, 40 years ago, whatever it was when they first originally made it. And all they did was they gave you beautiful decals to go with it, but the, the, the model itself was a total disaster. Oh. You could not, virtually just about impossible to build this as a decent looking car. I mean, oh. if, you, if you did, you'd have to be really like a rocket scientist to do it. So challenge that worked it challenge so what i did was i didn't try <laughs> i didn't try to make it like a decent looking car so i have another junker over here the 57 chevy yeah you got a you got an extra motor to go with it <laughs> you got the hood you got all the stuff in the trunk I, actually i think the motor is supposed to be in the trunk of the car with all the rest of the stuff back there Honestly, I kind of like it better the way it looks here than it does on the picture of the box. <laughs> so this is another one. If you look under the hood, you see the transmission is hanging there with the transmission fluid leaking out of it. Yeah, I see the muffler in the passenger seat. You, you see the, <laughs> see the battery there. You see the hoses from the heater just hanging in. Oh, you're giving me flashbacks of my first Civic. <laughs> you see the old exhaust system just stuffed inside the car. No steering wheel. Ah, you drive straight eventually. You there you go. Where you're going. There you go. Now, this is just amazing work. Yeah, that's that's another one. I mean, I, the job I have, my day job, which is Go technically ahead. at night, same right. concept. I have the time to be able to do this, but unfortunately, I don't think they would truly appreciate 
me sitting there at the front desk working on a model? Well, honestly, at home when I was on a on a on a midnight shift, there was no bosses around, and yeah. I, I could crack out a kit like that because <laughs> what we had to do was monitor the facility. Right. So we had to go around every hour on an hour and take readings of all all the machinery, make sure that everything was functioning, the water flowed, all, everything was working properly. But you had time in between to sit down and read a yeah. book or, take or a relax. Break, take a walk, do your the, the thing was, come right back. somebody had to be there to make sure that everything was functioning. Right. But as long as everything was working, you were fine. No, I you were fine. Completely. So you were able to do that for a while. And then when you pulled it off of that shift, then that was the end of that. Uh, oh, yeah, days, forget it. You can't do right. much work. All the bosses shift. around. And, yeah. yeah. They don't truly appreciate this. And some of them probably play with models at home and don't truly appreciate the artistic skill and effort it takes into making these things look as beautiful as they do right i mean granted it is a, it looks like a junker and i still find it's more beautiful than the picture on the box i know i just said that already but right. it is just that amazing of a work if you well, look you see the rust on the top the change in paint even the wheels have are discolored well the hardest part to start a project like that is that you're afraid of it because when you see the model on a box and you see other people make a nice right. looking model, you know, and then you're going to attempt to destroy it, you know? I mean, <laughs> you have to actually symbolically destroy the kit to get it into the shape that you want it. Right. And people are scared of that. I was too. But I went to some model shows where they had cars on display, the models on display, and I saw that people had done things like that. And I said, you know, I have to try that. Right. And that's when my friend gave me the first Nomad kit that I worked on, and then that's what I did. And it turned out like that. Well, it's beautiful. You know, Thank goodness that's, you tried. That's, that's, what, that's what it turned out to be. But you have to get the faith to be able to jump into it to try to yeah. do it. Well, you can't always get it right the first time. That's what practice, trial and error, and experience shows us. Exactly. I love it. I mean, kind of feel like I was this tall as I can get in one of these cars. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Take little selfies next to the, well, maybe not next to the cop car, <laughs> but maybe next to the drag and the other cars. You over there see if you find a find a good tire on there, take it to Jack and take the wheel off. You know? yeah. I'll take it home with you, you know. Put it on your car. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I mean I still have Hot Wheels. They're fun. I remember growing up playing with Hot Wheels on my grandmother's plastic covered couch. Right, right, right. Certain people will understand that, some won't. <laughs> And, you know, it had the perfect lining in the seam that fit a Hot Wheel. Fantastic. Oh, so I had go, a built-in track, but it was a straight shot. There was no, well, the no, wheel, no if the wheel there. popped off, there's no fixing it. There's, okay, now this car has no wheel. Right, and I have right, to go right, try right. to toys, go to Toys R Us or, see, what was it? Kitty City, KB Toys, any of the old right, toy right, stores right, to try right, to right. find another. Right, right. Now, like I've noticed, um... What is it? Michaels Arts and Crafts. They started. They started to sell a lot more models. They've actually started to expand their collection. Yeah, but their prices are through the roof, though. Yeah, their I prices get, are through the roof. I received the. I get coupons in the mail from in, in the email from them. Yeah, but only one at a time. So if you go there, you want to buy three kits. Yeah. You know, and then if you want to buy paint, it's not mm -hmm. on sale. So. Well, you, no, there are other loopholes. Yeah, they get, and then it's only a certain day, right? No, Legos because. With the, the loss of Toys R Us, a lot of these other stores, such as Party City, have picked up the slack with toys. Oh, okay. So I, I go to Michael's. They sell Legos. I'm like, all oh, right, I got a coupon for 40% off. Yeah. Any one item in the store. Right. No exception. Didn't say anything about I go to the register. The guy says, no, these don't count. It's like, the coupon says any one item. No, but these are sale end items. <laughs> Yeah, Do you still want it? No, I only yeah, wanted yeah, it because yeah, it was yeah, half price. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, really always, don't want to spend that right there, now. There's always something. It's just to come on to get people into the yeah. store. You know, it's hard. I mean, I did buy other pens and art supplies, but well, I if you really need, wanted if you, the Lego. If you, if you need it, then you have to have it. Then you yeah. absolutely need it. But uh, other than that. See, I, I personally have an issue with my Legos. I see a Lego. I love building it. I love the minifigures. And once in a while, I try to get creative with it and create my own designs like i used to when i was a kid but now right. i look at it and let's say i just i just built this cop car out of legos it looks so beautiful even though i'm not the one that originally thought of the idea i don't want to take it apart now right 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 it's right like, right exactly and then it's hard to find the pieces you really want to mm -hmm. make what you really want you know the idea yeah, you right, have right. in your head and then if you take it apart you lose the pieces now mm -hmm. and try to put it back together oh it's something else i have a giant bucket because of my children 
Right. It is a huge Tupperware, let's say from the basic, from the top of this table to about this high, mm. maybe about this wide. Mm. All their old sets, right. everything was chucked in a bucket. Now I'm a bit of a pack rat. I've kept all the um, instruction booklets. So that eventually- Try to find all the right pieces. <laughs> That's the other thing. It's easier to find Carmen San Diego and Waldo than there, it is to find some of these pieces. There, there you go, there you go. You get through 100,000 Some of you would understand before. those references, okay. some might not. Yeah. We're in the world is common Sunday. Yeah. I just like that show. I grew you know? up watching. I, I grew just up, like that show. I'm like yeah. a lot of my friends watching yeah. Channel 13 and PBS. Yeah, they used to have a lot of good stuff. Yeah. yeah, not anymore. They used to have a lot of good no. stuff. But now it's all downhill from that. Uh, yeah, it's all bright colors and flash now. Mm. I do. Although my kids, you mentioned earlier, we were talking about when you introduced uh, Lou to comic books, you saw Pinky in the Brain. My kids recently just discovered Animaniacs and they. They're a little confused about it, right? Right. Because it is nothing like cartoons nowadays. Right. The cartoons nowadays are too uh, fast moving. I mean, yeah. you know, when the old cartoons they used to move at a pace and you could follow it. Now everything's like, yeah. like, like it's going 100 miles an hour. Uh -huh. You get dizzy trying to watch it. Oh yes. Uh, it's, I've it's actually different. banned certain cartoons in my house because yeah. I grew up with. Even as ridiculous as Woody Woodpecker and um, Chili Willy used to be, right. they, exactly. I could never, re I could never recreate that laugh. <laughs> but as silly as these cartoons were, they always had a moral. They always taught you something. Nowadays, they don't really teach you anything. No, and it's there's just... a lot of hidden jokes in these that, as a child, I wouldn't understand. But as an adult, I'm starting to understand. Right, 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 right. It's not what it used to be. Everything is different. Yeah, everything is different. My kids took over my, my love for comic books. I actually got chewed out by my comic book store guy because he sees my children more than he sees me. Yeah. I'm looking at, who do you think is paying for the comics they come e get? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I still collect, but I don't always get to read. My kids, they'll sit there and they'll blow through a whole stack of comics in one night. Right, right, right. And they love it. Models, I... Yeah, I used to spend a good hour, hour and a half going yeah. through, a, through a comic book. Yeah. I mean, those days... You know, it was you had all the little, the little squares mm -hmm. where they had the little balloons with the words in it. Now they got these comic books, one whole page, and it's another whole page. Yeah. I mean, they just put pages. a lot of lot of pages in there mm -hmm. just to go go through it before you had to actually read it. And then you had all the little comments from Stan Lee. Uh, He'd say something, Spider Lee, Sp 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 Spider Man, mm -hmm. and then Stan Lee would put a little comment and then say Stan Lee, you know, at the end of the comment, mm -hmm. you know. Now nowadays, I love the direction comics have went. It seems they're modernizing it or humanizing it a little too much. Yeah, the but the reason we read comics is because it's fantasy. It's amazing to see somebody swinging by on a web, a lady flying by with a golden lasso. Now it's what they're doing after they just saved the day. I don't care that she went to, the, to go buy falafels. I really don't care <laughs> that she had indigestion. <laughs> no, I want to see her beating up bad yeah. guys teaching me something. You want, you want to see Batman jump into the Batmobile and right. take off? I mean, After certain aspects, guy, yeah. yeah. I like to see certain details. Okay, his car got wrecked. They show him fixing it. I like that. That does answer a few questions. Okay, Batman fixes his own stuff. That's beautiful. <laughs> Maybe they should have Superman sewing his cape after it gets ripped. <laughs> that needle. would be nice. Sewing his yeah. cape up. Hey, I ripped my cape on that building there. It's so bad. I don't want to mm -hmm. see Batman go into Auto, Auto Land, Auto Zone to go buy a, a carburetor. That's not really, you know, appealing to me. I hear you. I hear you. Now the models, I actually thought about getting my, my children into it. Unfortunately, we uh, we don't have the space for it. Right, right, and right. I have a five-year-old, so yeah. I have a little mini Godzilla King Kong running through yeah. the house tearing things Yeah, no, I, I think I must have been about not, about nine years old or so when I started with the models. I must have been about eight, nine years old, maybe ten, you know. I mean, certain age is a little yeah. too young for that yet. And, well, I, I still and remember the, my first model I built with my dad. It was a... It was a World War II fighter plane. Right, plane, right, right. right. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. amazing. Well, you have to have the the uh, concentration to be able to sit there for the mm -hmm. amount of time it takes to do it. Today, the kids have no concentration. Yeah. They, they can't sit still for more than two minutes without jumping up and down. Oh, yeah. So it makes it difficult for them to concentrate on something if like that. If it's not digital, they don't pay attention. I mean, I mean, to do something like this, the amount of hours that you would do to mm -hmm. take to do it, I mean, what kids are going to sit there? I mean... Yeah, it's I mean, crazy. I'm, I'm lucky, my kid. I, you know, I love you guys. You guys make me so proud and so frustrated in the same sentence. But I love that my kids will actually sit down and dedicate time. My kids are all four of them are amazing artists. Mm, I mean, the great. baby's five, 
So she's not painting Picasso pictures yet. Man, but yeah, it's a start. She whatever. is so far above her age level. It's amazing. Right. The others start. are so fantastic. My yeah. sons, and I won't, even though I'm already admitting it, my sons are at my level, or close to my level now, at the age, at the age they're at. My oldest is 13, and he's already close to my level. Yeah, well, they, 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 they're building on your experience mm -hmm. that you showed them. Because uh, when, when you do it, they learn from you. So they're getting a head start. Right. If they started from scratch and they didn't have a parent that did it, yeah. they'd be way behind because they'd be starting from nothing. See, I get a little slack from some of the other family any, any Anybody that teaches their kid to do what they're doing, they're getting a heads up because mm -hmm. they're getting an advantage. If a kid starts it on his own, he's on his own. Yeah. You know? See, I get slack from my, my some of the other more macho family members. Oh, your children don't play sports. No, but my child will paint you the most beautiful picture. And we're not very athletic. Even though we're not fat or lazy or anything that bad, we're, really not, we're not big sports guys. I'm not really but into... artistic. I'm not into sports. I mean, for me, all these athletes, the amount of money that they make, yeah. it's ridiculous. It's overrated. It's ridiculous. I mean, and it drives up the price of yeah. everything. If you want to go to a game... The price that you, you know, years ago, if you spent three dollars to go get a ticket to see a Yankee game or whatever, you know, in the fifties, I mean, you know, you get a hot dog for fifty yeah. cents. I mean, but today, uh, you know, it's just, it, it, it's just the amount of Mickey Mantle. I don't think he made more than fifty thousand dollars a season. You know, and you're talking about a guy that hit a hell of a lot of home yeah. runs. Now forget it. It's, it's everything has gotten unnecessarily complicated over the years. Exactly. Yeah, but it's every, a sport. Enjoy it. Have fun with the sport, and you'll see the fans have fun with the players having fun. You enjoy the, it? Yeah, the, the fun The fun part is gone for a lot of it. The, yeah. the fun is, most of it is business and politics mm -hmm. now, a lot of politics, a lot of business. I mean, it killed it. It killed it. The sport is, is pretty much dead. I mean, and the other thing is, everything is now computers. Mm -hmm. I mean... They'll study what another the, the computers are studying another team. They're trying to break down the, the, how to score. Everything is is on a grid pattern that they, they the computers trying to take an advantage of what this other team is doing. I mean, it's like it's not like you get out there and you actually just play in the game. You yeah. know, you just get out there to play. Now everything is so so it's, different. Yeah, it's different. All different. The ball, you hit it. You run in a nice square. End the story. It doesn't need to be overcomplicated. Yeah. Well, I had so much fun with this interview as I did with the last well, one. Well, there's one more thing if you have time oh, for it. Go I don't know if you have time for it, but there was supposed to be a surprise. We like surprises. <laughs> <laughs> a, a surprise that was supposed to be exclusively divulged about the next model kit that we, we're going to do. Bitnap, you, Bitnap will brings you this exclusive. Exclusive first on the next kit that. We're gonna do. That's the picture of the kit. Okay, and this is another kit that has options to it. So this has got uh, different ways that this kit could be built. Do you already have ideas on how you want to get it done? Well, that's the point. Into the process well, much. no, because what we're gonna do first is. First thing we have to do is take the stuff out of the box and look at what we have over here. <laughs> now, we have two different just sets of glass for the car. We have a red okay. one and we have a white one. So you have a choice there which color glass you want to use. On the box it shows a yellow race car with the red glass in it. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to do that, you could. This is the bag with the body in it. It's got the body and the fenders. Got the top part with the fenders that go on the bottom. This is the first thing you have to do with any kit. You have to rummage through it and see what's in the box before you even start anything. So here we have tires. We have four stock tires and two slicks. Nice, good and, and the slicks are good. They got printed Goodyear on them and they got a blue streak around them. The blue streak Goodyear slicks. I don't know if you can get the... Uh, oh, an advertisement. I should get paid for that, right? <laughs> I should get paid for that one, right? I'm advertising their product there. Then we have another bag, and this has got the interior bucket, and it's got. I see the hood. It's got two hoods. Mm. It's got two different hoods. One for the 39 and one for the 40, because you can make this as a 39 or 40. You got the wheels, you got the front axle, 
You got the backing plates for the uh, car. So you have a little a little tow hitch that you could use if you want to show a little tow hitch that you could tow the car with. And then this has got the bottom part. You got a motor in there. You got seats. You got the radiator. There's the dashboard right there. And you got the dashboard. You got a piece of the front for the uh, 40 version of it. Oh, the grill? The, yeah, for the part of it, the, the grill would go into that would be for the 40. And this is the chrome tree over here. This has got the chrome in it. This would be the grill for the 39, and that's the grill for the 40. Then you have more options for the tires. You have the tail lights, the bumpers. You got different headlights, one for the 40, the other one for the 39. You got what looks like a little um, gas can, gas, ca uh, gas tank. Oh, this is awesome. I think I might be stopping at Michael's on my way home. <laughs> You got the instruction sheet, it shows you how to build either stock or drag, custom custom drag or stock. So you have a stock engine, which is the Ford engine. The other one is a custom Oldsmobile engine. This one here, you have actually an Oldsmobile engine in here. So you can use the Oldsmobile engine as, a, as the race version of it, which is great. 3940, you could be either 39 or 40. So whichever you prefer, there's the instructions on it. You got different uh, pieces for the front end for the axles to have it raised or lowered. You get a roll bar in there, which is good in case you want to use it for drag racing. Yeah, safety first. A little hood scoop. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah, this, that's the instruction sheet. And you even get something else in here. You get decals. Yeah. Well, you'd you have to tight. You'd have to cut the bag open to see what it says, but they might they'd probably show you on the box what the decals would look like on the car itself. So that's the decals. Then we have something else on the bottom of the box here, I think. Or is that the bottom of the box? Nah, it looks wait, like the bottom. wait, no, wait, wait. Wait, there's something here. <laughs> there's something there, but you can't get it out. <laughs> oh, there it goes. It's coming, it's coming out. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, nice little picture of wow. the car. And you get a picture Beautiful. of what the car would look like complete. So you, you can actually frame that. That that you can put in a picture frame. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. But that comes with the kit. Well, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but I take it you do have an idea of what you, where you want to go with this one? Well, I'm thinking like the, the old... Uh, stock cars that they used to use on the racetracks like they mm -hmm. have I don't know if any of you guys remember the old track they had in Freeport mm -hmm. where they had the stock cars going around mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe one of those I like that idea and if I do another one maybe a junker so I don't know all right we look forward to seeing the work well that that's it that's a beautiful picture I, I love that look at that that's gorgeous it looks like it looks like a nice red sunset you know <laughs> the sun, sun is going down and there you are, your race track. You're right. You're right near the beach with your track, and the sun is going down. The sky is mm -hmm. red. I like the flame and, coming out the muffler. And, and you're, <laughs> fly, you're flying at over 100 miles an hour. You're going well over 100 miles an hour with this car. You're just zooming along. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. Well, we look forward to seeing it, Tom. I thank you for having us today. All right. All right. I'll see. So all of you out there, there's a whole new world for you to, you know, get into. Good meditation. Good artwork. Good concentration. Look forward to seeing you guys. And this kit is readily, have a good one. readily available in your hobby stores. So if you don't have a problem picking it up, you should be able to get it. Can be found at almost anywhere, to be honest. I don't want to suggest any hobby store because that would be, like be like an endorsement. And I don't want to... Uh, <laughs> I understand. I don't want to get sued or disclaimer. All right. To all of you out there, take a bite.